Thank you for being with us. I think we should give a really big applause because sure. we tried to have you for a long time and we are very happy Finally, it worked out. So tell us, Stripe is launching in Germany. I think this is the yeah, trigger point for you being here. But there are a lot of German customers you had before. What is changing for them? What does it really mean when you say you're now focusing on the German speaking language? Uh, yes, we're launching in uh, Germany. We're, in fact, launching in all of Dach and Benelux. Uh, we have been testing here for a while, and we've worked with uh, thousands of, of companies during the beta period. But launch for us is really two things. One, it means we have hired the team to be able to support the local market. And two, it means we have uh, worked with our beta customers to find the product that we think is really good. For, uh, for the German market, the obvious difference is uh, payment methods. Uh, and so we spend a lot of time uh, uh, on getting the, the right APIs and the right service for German businesses. Uh, and now, as part of the launch, they can accept, this is new, they can accept credit cards, support, uh, uh, SEPA direct debit, gyro pay, things like that, uh, which we're really proud of. Did they teach you what direct überweisung means? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Money wiring. You, you offer that as well? Exactly. Yeah, no, we're very familiar now. OK, so we have a lot of payment companies here, and they support merchants. And we often ask, Marco, which payment provider fits to me? So wh wh what do you think is your edge? What is the typical customer, and what promise you make to that customer? Yeah, it's, it, it's funny, you know, because when we started Stripe, there was this dichotomy, and, and I think there still is today, where on the one hand, people say, oh, wow, this is, a, you know, this is a really crowded space. There are so many payment companies. So that's one reaction we would get. But then if you actually talked to any entrepreneur, if you actually talked to any developer who is building an internet product, they would tell you that payments was a nightmare for them. And so, OK, there's clearly some kind of mismatch here, where on the one hand, you know, people think the space is really crowded, but no one is actually having their problem solved. And so we think the Stripe Edge should come from two places. One is being really easy to, uh, to get started and get the business underway. And even when it, you know, th with things like our, our payment method coverage, we're not the first company to support a whole bunch of different payment methods. But the Stripe API is by far and away the easiest way to support all those international payment methods and go global. So we put a lot of work into making, a, making it such that there wasn't incremental integration effort on behalf of the developer. So that's one. Speed to market is for developers. Part two, and I think this is the more interesting part versus everyone who, who is, uh, everyone else is, who is in the space, is, uh, I mean, Stripe is a software company. Uh, and we spend a lot of our time building software and thinking about software challenges because that's actually what our customers need. And so one of the trends we see is uh, the growth of marketplaces and the number of platform economy companies. This is everything from uh, during our beta we had in Belgium, Besit, which is a, a sharing economy company for, uh, for, for babysitters. So they have 70,000 babysitters on their platform to uh, 70,000 babysitters. babysitters. Uh, and so you can book a so babysitter also digitally. adults in Belgium uh, getting a babysitter? <laughs> so so, so, so Belgium and France is you know, the, the, the places they operate, to, uh, operate in. All the way to uh, Clark's, maybe some of you are familiar. Uh, they are in the construction industry, you know, very much a traditional Mittelstand uh, industry. But uh, they're a platform company for, uh, you know, if you want to rent a JCB or a Caterpillar, you can do that on Clark. So we see all these traditional industries all across the way being disrupted by technology. Traditionally, running a marketplace company, extremely complex. You have to have all these internal development resources. You have very high compliance costs, operational costs. And so we build a software platform in Stripe Connect for running a marketplace. I don't see any other payment companies thinking about payments as a an API problem, a software problem, an infrastructure problem, we look much more to someone like Amazon Web Services than we do to any traditional payment company. Let's talk a sec about entrepreneurship. I mean, Stripe is a huge company, and I like it. It's still founders-driven and founders-led. Um, how do you compare the US entrepreneur to the European entrepreneur? You, you are, I think, born in Ireland, and you live now in San Francisco. And I'm sure you cross paths of many entrepreneurs. What do you think we Europeans can learn from American entrepreneurship? Yeah, so I've, I've a little bit of experience with both in that I grew up in Ireland and then I went to the United States for college and I've been there in San Francisco for Stripe ever since. 
uh, and San Francisco, obviously, uh, a very significant startup hub, and we're now starting to see significant growth in, I mean, it's night and day comparing the, the, the European and especially the Dublin technology ecosystem when I left Ireland in 2009 versus, uh, versus today. Uh, stuff I think that's going well is, I mean, you're starting to see significant numbers of valuable technology companies being built, and, and that stuff is working. I think the stuff that uh, could still uh, improve is, one, philosophically, uh, there's this nice risk-taking approach in, in, in uh, Silicon Valley where people are willing to change jobs, people are you know, willing to take career risks, and I haven't encountered anywhere with as much useful risk tolerance as, uh, as Silicon Valley. It is, it is really great over there, uh, and that's something that I feel like Europe is not quite yet caught up on. Uh, I mean, the other part of it, uh, and this is a little bit speaking to what we spend time on at Stripe, is the infrastructure available to companies. Mm. You know, how hard it is to start a company, and that's everything from regulation to payments infrastructure to hosting infrastructure to the availability of capital. Uh, and again, the US traditionally does very well there. And it sounds like you took the headache away for the entrepreneur to think about payments. You're offering payments by various methods all over the globe. And otherwise, you have to negotiate for every country, for every channel individually. So you take that away. And by the way, the idea of NOAA is to connect service providers like yours with the companies, the growth companies, the startups, and give them the best tools to run their business more efficiently because there's capital, there's of course talent, yes. but tools are for me actually the most important and we run a business without offices so we are dependent on Slack, Dropbox yep. and so on and so forth. Pipedrive yes. or CRM. Yeah. Is, is that also the way you see it and do you have partnerships with some others? Yeah, yeah. I mean this is exactly the way we uh, we look at it and we in fact run a, run a survey of the German uh, startup ecosystem and found that uh, almost everyone reports you know, finding the tools like this, yeah. the stripes and slacks of the world, very important in getting their business off the ground. And a majority of people in fact saying they probably could not get their business off the ground without tools like this. And so that's very much how we view it. And we view Stripe as an infrastructure pr provider fundamentally. You know, people often ask us, when are you going to do a wallet? You know, when are you going to do a consumer facing payment offering? And that's just not our thing. We would be happy over the long term, you know, we think about this mission of growing the GDP of the internet, and we'd be very happy over the long term if, you know, on the consumer side, no one really knows about Stripe, but we're continually making it easier to start a business and get it off the ground, even if that's nothing to do with payments. Um, and yeah, something like Noah, I mean, we're delighted to be here. We have lots of Stripes running around. We actually have a booth outside, uh, but I'm told that with the thunderstorm coming, it acts as a lightning rod, uh, and so maybe don't, you know, <laughs> don't touch it. Um, well, there are quite some people who were outside because it was quite empty in the morning. Mm -hmm. So what's Project Atlas? Um, I think you, you, you bundled all the initiatives and the philosophy how to support entrepreneurs into a project name, uh, Project Atlas. Can, can you elaborate a little bit on what that is? Project Atlas makes it sound great, kind of like Project Apollo or something, you know, a, a military project. No, um, pr uh, Atlas is a product that we launched a little over a year ago. And uh, sometimes when we talk about this idea of growing the GDP of the internet, people say, yeah, 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 that's nice. Stripe is a payments company. Uh, that's you know, a good way of putting it. And we're like, no, we're really serious about this. We think about that as Stripe's long-term goal. We started with payments because that was the biggest impediment facing entrepreneurs, facing companies to begin with. But we no way limit ourselves to that. Uh, and we already have kind of a number of products starting to get outside that. And maybe the clearest illustration of that, when people really got it, was Atlas. So what Atlas is, is you, know, you guys are all lucky in Germany. You have a uh, you know, very well-developed banking system, you know, a very well-developed uh, capital market. Uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of the tools are in place. That's not the case in many companies around the world. And so we notice that entrepreneurs often move to the United States, or, or at least move to the United States for a little bit, to take advantage of the United States business climate. So we thought, OK, how can we bring that business climate to them instead? And so Atlas, it, it, I mean, it sounds kind of weird. It is a way for people to incorporate a US corporation, get a US business account, get uh, tax and legal advice, and get a Stripe account for payments. And so it's everything they need to enter you know, the, the, the internet economy, no matter where they are. And so we've seen all these awesome businesses in more than 110 companies incorporate uh, and start getting access to the internet economy in a way they could not before. It's nothing to do with payments, but it's very clearly aligned with our mission. And you have a VC as a partner for this? It sounds like a lot what the VCs promise 
the companies to do. Absolutely. We partner with a lot of investors because they act as a referral network for Atlas companies because often it's much better for them uh, if companies incorporate with Atlas than if they try to figure, out, figure things out themselves. So going global for you must be an important factor because you offer global payments. Um, DACH, or the German-speaking languages, are obviously here now. Um, how important is Asia for you? Asia is uh, our next focus as you know, Europe starts to ramp up. Now we're starting to spend a lot of time in Asia. We, uh, we uh, launched Singapore and Japan last year. We're now testing in Hong Kong and a few other countries. Uh, and so it's an area where we're spending a lot of time. And for Stripe, there's two components. One is making Stripe available to businesses in new countries, but also for our customers. Yep. Often they are leaving revenue on the table because they are not internationalized pro properly. So you know, everyone in Europe thinks of you know, at least, OK, we have the EU single digital market, and that's very mature. Even that's not really true. 16% of EU e-commerce is cross-border. You know, that means the other 84% is domestic. And when you think about the size of the EU market, no matter what country you're based in, that is probably the wrong ratio uh, you know, for, for, for most internet companies for that to be the case. And so those are the kinds of problems that Stripe can help address, helping our customers go more global. And when you look at your offering versus competitors, um, going back on that, and I, I liked what you said earlier, it's, it's about reach, so being able to process transaction globally. Uh, Peter from Adyen earlier, mm -hmm. their early pitch, and today is still, we help the merchants to increase conversion by improving the checkout page and, and make it very easy. And then the third aspect which you bring in is you are like a, like a shepherd for these startups or for these young entrepreneurs and help them with a lot of things. Is price not anymore the most important thing when you pick a payment provider, therefore? I mean, price has always been an important thing, and price is important for, for us in the, the local market. It's important in any market we operate in. But what happens is, you know, we have these discussions with people uh, where no matter what payment... Discussion with whom? We have discussions with companies where the, you know, we say to them, okay, I mean, uh, you're using your current payment provider, but you also have three full-time developers working on payments because you're building a marketplace uh, and you're building it all in-house. And that is crazy. And ah. so people tend to be very hung up initially on the nominal sticker cost, and then when you start to add up all the implicit costs uh, that, that, that they're incurring, then it starts to become a very different conversation. Do you own any Bitcoins? Uh, I, I hear this the, 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 quest, <laughs> the question of the day. I do not uh, uh, own any Bitcoins. Uh, I don't own any cryptocurrency, actually. But based on some of the recent uh, fluctuations that have been happening you know, with, Ethere with <laughs> Ethereum and things like this, it sounds like I'm a sucker. Yeah. John, I'm very happy you, you came. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very exciting story. Excellent. And you must have a big customer support team, no? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much.